All In is tonight. This is the biggest independent wrestling show of all time. And this is the biggest uh, non-WWE wrestling show in the United States uh, since probably WCW. So this is a big deal. Um, the, Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks put this together. And they come out to start on the pre-show. And they're talking to the fans. You know, they welcome the, the fans of the show. The fans are going crazy. It doesn't look like, it looks like there's some empty seats. I don't know if they have it for uh, the the whole arena fell. But it looks like they see some empty seats. Anyway, the, the, they, they tease them at Pyro. And the, the Pyro eventually goes off they, they kept going on one two three uh they showed the road warrior and animal makes a cameo appearance um that that was uh well done and then they bring out the merch so uh they're like they're they're walking they're opening up the show it's on the pre-show i thought it was kind of cool uh so um i thought it was a fun way to start the show now on the pre-show the first match is going to be a, a tag team match Social Uncensored, it's uh, Freaking Kazarian and Scorpio Sky against the Briscoes, uh, them boys. You know, these two guys, um, I don't know, I think it was um, either Mark or Jay, I think WWE still holds it against them. They went on Twitter and they went on this huge rant about gay marriage or something, and uh, it was pretty controversial. I think that's why WWE never hired them, but I think they would have, uh, no, they would have ruined them. Never mind, WWE would have ruined them, but I thought they would have been... Uh, they would have gone after him, but I think that's what hurt them. Anyway, this is on the pre-show. Um, I'm sure they'll have a good match. Tag team match was a lot of fun. Um, it was a good tag match. Briscoe's, uh, and this doesn't seem like they're anywhere near uh, what they were a few years ago. Uh, they're a bit older now, but uh, SCU, um, uh, Kazarian, in uh, particular, you know, he's been around for a while, uh, but, you know, he, lead, he did well here, and... Um, but uh, SCU gets the win. The the ending, I thought it was a uh, the match was really good. The ending of the match is kind of like uh, Kazarian's in like a power. He's gonna get like in this um, doomsday device position, and uh, one of the Briscoes jumps off, but he catches him with the power slam, and he goes to the and he slams on the ground in the midair, uh, and he gets the victory. It was a good match. Uh, now now we go to the over the budget battle round. I'm really I'm really looking forward to this. Um, there's a chance Pac comes back, aka Neville from WWE when he left. Uh, taking me Pac, I don't know. Uh, we might see him here. So before they go to the over the budget battle, they have Kenny Omega in a backstage interview, uh, with some chick and, uh, they, they took some shots at WWE, which was funny. This is actually really entertaining. Uh, they showed the woman and she's like, uh, like, uh, she's not wearing high heels and she's trying to make Omega look taller and they showed Omega on his, uh, tippy toes. I thought that was actually, uh, funny. <laughs> I wish they'd just do something. I wish there was just a parody of WWE, just make fun of all their cliches. But anyway, the battle royal is going to start. So, and, uh, they had some, uh, people there. Uh, they had Colt Cabana, they had Billy Gunn, uh, they had Bully Ray, they had a woman wrestling, I'm not sure her name is. Uh, but you know, right when the match starts, they show Billy Ray, you know, slam, uh, powerbomb a guy through a table. So they show a female wrestler, Jordan Grace, wrestling with the men, and she gets kicked right in the fucking face. <laughs> Holy fuck. There's a lot of comedy in this match. Um, it's, uh, it's for the, I mean, our, 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 our world title, so I thought they'd take it a little bit more seriously. But there's a lot of comedy. I'm glad this is on the pre show. It definitely belongs on the zero hour, zero hour, if you want to actually call it what they're saying instead of pre show. So, uh, it turns out to be Flip Gordon. He was under a mask. He came out and, uh, he last minute Billy Ray. They used some comedy, but they got good. Um, I thought they did Jordan Grace. I thought she uh, actually did some good stuff near the end and they had, uh, Colt Cabana near the end, but, uh, Flip Gordon wins, it'll be him and Jay Luthor on the main card. Well, Cody Rhodes, Young Bucks, all your marbles lie on the show, and the show All In is about to begin. All In starts off with the playing of the national anthem. I thought this was a good addition. Not only does, you know, playing National Anthem makes the event feel a lot bigger. Like, WrestleMania is the only WWE show that uh, they play the National Anthem at. So, uh, you got the feeling that they're, 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 you know, upping the scale of the show when you have the National Anthem. They uh, they start off uh, without a video package to start the show off. Uh, they started off with um, a matchup with uh, MCF versus Matt Cross. 
And uh, they had a good match. One thing you can tell, Matt Cross is old. You can see his gray hairs. Not too many wrestlers use their gray hairs. Maybe that's his gimmick. But uh they had a good opening to match. The crowd was into it since it's a good way to start the show. It did feel like the least important match, which is fine. I think uh, this, this is the, it seems like the show, they're going to go like uh, least important to more important instead of WWE, which usually goes... um you know, just throws on hard openers and has the match put around this. I think it's more of a constructive wrestling card, actually. Um, if that's what they're going to do, it's only the first match. But they had a good matchup. Uh, and uh, they did some comedy spots a bit too much early. Some unrealistic spots. So it was still a fine match. Match ends with uh, Matt Cross hitting the the shooting star press for the victory. So old guy wins. The next up, they go to Stephen Amell against Christopher Daniels, also of SCU. Um... He, uh, he, these two, like, uh, so Stephen ML, this was supposed to be the weakest match of the show. Everyone knew this was going to be, like, the weakest. It wasn't a bad match or anything, but, uh, I thought it went on a bit too long. If this was to get Stephen ML over, I felt, I felt like if they had to meet Christopher Daniels, maybe the crowd would turn on him, but they felt like they were looking to get ML over. Um, here, a good showing for him, and I think that did. Um, him and Cody worked together before, uh, when, um, I don't want to, <laughs> uh, when Cody was doing that stupid Stardust gimmick and uh, Mel came in for a SummerSlam a few years ago, so they've worked together before to probably be a connection. Here, uh, the match was, um, match was okay. I thought it went on too long. They had the big table spot and had Daniels getting the victory with the, the best moonsault ever, but I thought it went on a little bit too long, but it's still a good match. Next up, you have the women's match. So, uh, before the match, it had two special guest commentators. You had, um, So, um, yeah, in uh, the Fatal Four Way, um, you have, uh, Tessa Blanchard, who is the biggest star easily of the four, uh, Britt Baker, you had, uh, Chelsea Green, and, uh, you had, um, Madison Rain, and also on, uh, commentary, I believe, was Mandy Leone, um, and, uh, it's along with, uh, Tennille Dash with the former Emma. Um, so the Fatal Four Way, the, the commentary was okay. I thought they might, the commentary might suck. I thought the two, uh, two of them, Tanil and Mandy, I thought they did fine on commentary actually. So the match itself, um, it went on for a while. I thought it got good near the end. The crowd was into it. They wanted it to be really good. Tessa Blanchard's easily the biggest star of the four. She came out. When she came out, I'm thinking to myself, holy fuck, Ricochet is a lucky motherfucker. That lucky bastard. Uh, yeah, obviously she looks great. Uh, she uh she's a top star in Impact, or female star. Also not to mention an impact, I have to say, uh I don't know. I think uh my favorite uh impact female star besides Tessa would have to be Scarlet Bordeaux, the smoke show. Holy fuck, she's gorgeous. Anyway, uh this Fatal Four match was good. The crowd got into it near the end. They really wanted it to succeed. Um I thought it was good. Had Tessa one day. I didn't like the ending, the ending was a little bit botched, but it got really good. Uh Blanchard goes over in the end they have the four hug, four of them hugging. Uh they all raised their hands up. So they did that near the end, kind of you know, the four horsewoman thing. Um match was a good match. I enjoyed it. I thought it was uh did go on long. I thought some of these matches could be trimmed down that they actually be better but they want to make this really good but uh i really enjoyed the women's match it was a good showcase for all of them especially uh tessa up next and i also thought uh chelsea green had a good showcase here as well up next is the i was surprised this is so early in the show i thought this would be like uh the co-main event the nwa world championship um you have uh i guess we call his name's nick aldous now also known as magnus uh, against, uh, Cody. And, uh, Cody's been, gonna be, uh, accompanied to, to the ring by, uh, his beautiful wife, Brandy. Um, so, uh, this match, I'm sure, um, I think Cody's gonna win. We'll see how they do. And, uh, I'm sure this will be really good. I'm surprised. I don't know why it's so early in the show, though. So, uh, when, when they're doing this match, um, they, uh, they hyped it up like it's a main event, and uh, Cody comes out with, uh, first they show Brandy, and that outfit she's wearing, it's like, oh my god, unbelievable. <laughs> and then they had uh, Cody came out with a whole bunch of close family friends, I believe. You had Diamond Dallas Page, you had Tommy Dreamer, you had uh, oh, someone else, I'm forgetting his name, I think he uh, he's worked with Cody. He also had Brandy's dad, so he had a lot of family friends. And then uh, when uh, uh, Nick Aldis came out as the champ, he uh, brought a whole bunch of legends who I saw Jeff Jarrett walking out with him. So they both uh, came out with uh, a lot of names. And this was hyped up as a main event. And I figured, you know what, this is before the intermission. They're probably going to do an intermission or something. Uh, after this match, it actually makes sense. It's kind of like the show split in two halves. This is the main event of the first part. And the problem is, if you just match the match they had was a slow match. 
if you do that later in the show, the crowd might be dead. So the match they had, uh, it was very slow. It was like a more of a Dusty Road style NWA match. It was slow and plodding. But it worked. Uh, they had Cody bleeding. I don't know how Cody got busted open. That part really bothered me. It's like they showed Diamond Dallas Page and they showed Davari. I don't know if Davari hit Cody or when the, uh, uh, Davari makes one and DDP hits him with the diamond cutter and all of a sudden we see Cody bleeding on the outside. I guess all this hit him with the forearm that they, the, the camera missed. The camera wasn't great on this show, I have to say, uh, so far, but, uh, the match goes on for long. It's just, you know, Magnus beating the shit out of Cody and then, uh, or all this, uh, when he's on the top rope, Brandy sacrifices herself and she takes an elbow to the back. But Cody gets the victory, gets a, a victory roll up. Um, he's able to, to pin all this and, uh, Cody's the new champ. It's a great moment. It was great. You know, it's his show, his show when he wins, um, the NWA title. It's a tribute to his father. The NWA title his father held many times and, uh, Cody on, at all in his show, uh, gets the huge moment. It was great. The fans loved it. Everyone's going crazy. It was the big moment. Um, so actually kind of, I guess the intermission's next. But uh, one well, thing also kind of annoying when Cody's celebrating, you want to see him celebrate when he's walking up with Brandy, and they keep showing the announcers, and I don't know, that, that thing kind of annoyed me, <laughs> the announcers, I don't need to see their faces, like, keep the camera on Cody, but uh, anyway, the match was, uh, it was really long, really slow, but it was really good, it told a really good story, it was much more of a, uh, an NWA Dusty style match, I think, this was a tribute to Cody's father, so definitely a great, uh, I'm sure he's really emotional, this was definitely a great moment. So yeah, a brief intermission. Uh, up next is the Chicago Street Fight. Joey Janela with uh, Penelope Ford in his corner against Hangman Page. In this um, Chicago Street Fight, so um, I mean Joey Janela. I mean before uh, before I start with Joey Janela versus uh, Hangman Page, uh, they showed the video package of uh, Hangman Page killing Joey Ryan, and that's going to be uh, that was part of the storyline. So. Joey Janela comes out with the smoking hot Penelope Ford. I call, called her Penelope Cruz uh, once or twice, but Penelope Ford. Um, and they, they actually called her Penelope Cruz on the sh- and, uh, during the match. So when Hangman comes out, they have a match, and it's a uh, Chicago Street Fight. To explain, it's basically tables, ladders, and Cracker Barrels. I guess Cracker Barrel, the restaurant was a sponsor of the show, so they actually have a giant Cracker Barrel. Uh, and they use that during the match. There's a lot of table spots. Uh, there's, uh, they dove onto the ladder, set up on the cracker barrel. They smashed the table. They did a big power bomb spot from the top of the ramp, which is like a big catwalk onto a table, which it looks like it really hurt, um, Joey Janela. It looked like it was a bad botch. He must have like smashed his head open. And, uh, Penelope took a super kick right to the fucking face. Um, and the match ends with a crazy spot, and they're on top of a ladder in the ring, and then uh, Janelle, or, uh, Hangman hits his finisher, like it's like this back body drop into a slam through the table, it's looking nasty, and uh, Hangman wins, but then after the match, everyone's going to talk about this, like these six guys dressed up in giant condoms, like as dicks, all end up in the ring, it's like these, they're kind of like the druids, <laughs> but for Joey Ryan, and Joey Ryan makes his return, he beats down Hang, uh, Hangman, does a dick flip. Oh, <laughs> it was funny. I know, uh, I'm sure all, I mean, I, I feel like this was done to troll someone like Jim Cornette. But anyway, that was definitely going to be a, a talk about segment. They, this, this was very over the top. It's also more to promote their being an elite show. Next is the ROH world title. It's Jay Lethal defending the title against Flip Gordon. And before the match, they show, uh, Jay Lethal walking backstage and someone I think gives them the black machismo sunglasses. <laughs> So I guess he might be a black machismo. That was a uh, was a great moment with uh, Jay Lethal. He comes out at the Wancho Man's original robe, um, and Lanny Poffo is uh, with him. He comes out with him, uh, the genius, and it's a, definitely a great tribute to Randy Savage. Definitely meant a lot to Jay Lethal. It seems uh, they, he comes out to the Macho Man's original, you know, the graduation music. Um, I thought it was just really, really cool. Uh, the, it was definitely got a big pop. I, I liked it a lot. So uh, this match and World and ROH uh, title, him and. Uh, uh, Flip Gordon. Also forgot to mention, uh, Flip Gordon came out with, uh, Brandy. I liked, uh, before the match did the, uh, the classic Mega Powers handshake before they started. That was really great. So during this match, there was a lot of comedy. There was kind of this thing where they'd slap, uh, Jay Lethal on the shoulder. He turned back into Macho Man and he wouldn't be Macho Man. Flip Gordon did the Hulk Hogan stuff, which I annoy you when this announcer is like, he's getting confused with the ultimate warrior. I'm thinking to myself, you fucking idiot. 
Well, this day in that commentary sucked today. You fucking idiot. How the hell could you not know that's Hogan, you fucking moron? And I wish Cody or someone would yell at him on his mic. It's Hogan. It's Hogan's dumb shit. Anyway, the match was fine. It did comedy. Uh, it was slow in parts. Um, they used Brandy a lot. Uh, it, it was fine. It was okay. I, I think it's getting late on the show. This might have been better earlier in the show. And uh, after that match, actually, Billy Ray comes out. He beats them both down with the chain. And then Colt Cabana makes his return. or uh, Not his return. He goes after Billy Ray. I guess they've been feuding. And what happens is uh, Billy Ray set up a table. And the three of them all now beat up Bully Ray after Colt Cabana makes a save. And they give him the triple power, to give him a power bomb uh, through a table. And this is like trying to break the record for most table bumps on a show. <laughs> it's getting close. But I mean, every single match has had like some kind of post match beatdown or a post-match segment like every match now so uh next is uh kenny omega and pentagon jr this should uh, be great it's kenny omega it's uh you have to expect you know a great match with him so with uh omega and pentagon they started off really uh really fast um lots of uh big spots you know omega hitting a signature moves one of the craziest spots was uh Pentagon hit his, this package pile driver on Omega onto the apron, which just looked absolutely nasty as hell. I like how they worked the spot where uh, Pentagon tried to break Kenny Omega's arm so he can't do the one winged angel, but uh, they had a great match. In the end, uh, Omega wins with the one winged angel. He hit a whole bunch of V triggers and wins. The match was really fast paced. They went right at each other. It was really, really good. Uh, the, I think the best match of the night so far it was a great match. Omega is the best wrestler in the world right now. No questions asked, I think. Um, the only guy who can say uh, maybe is, but there's the next guy who's going to wrestle is Okada, but uh, Omega right now. No, he's the New Japan IWGP World Champion. Um, guy's just been incredible. It's a great match, and uh, definitely, I think, the match of the night right now so far. So after the match, the lights go, and I immediately thought of Jericho. I'm surprised we didn't see his light-up jacket in the dark. He comes out. Uh, he's dressed up as Pentagon. He hits uh, the code breaker on Omega, reveals himself, and hits another code breaker. So uh, he did appear in the United States, even though he didn't really wrestle. So I don't know if it's a, it's a surprise appearance. I guess that, I don't know if that damages his relationship with Vince. But Jericho announces uh, Tim and Omega and Jericho Cruz. I don't know if that's going to be its own pay-per-view or something, but on the Jericho Cruz... Uh, him and Omega. I think part of the reason he's, he came into New Japan was to sell the Jericho Cruz and uh, Tim and Omega on the gonna have a match. And after the match, I liked how he uh, he kind of hit the announce table and he knocked down Callus over, which was kind of funny. So up next, co-main event, you have Marty Skrull against Kazuchika Okada. Marty Skrull kept saying, you know, he's not gonna do any comedy in this match. I'm sure he will, but this is a co-main event. Before uh, the uh, Okada and Skrull match started, they had. Uh, Scroll backstage and like, I don't know if they're trying to make fun of Marks or like, uh, you know, guys like Russo or, I don't know, people, Cornette, I don't know who they're trying to mock. But you, it, it, they're just joking. You know, it's clearly a show, uh, dedicated to the hardcore wrestling fans. So, um, this match, um, whole story is Scroll, he wants to wrestle like, uh, you know, a serious style against, uh, Okada. So with Okada and Skrull, one thing I heard from uh, Dave Meltzer actually uh, was that this match went on 12 minutes longer than it, than it was supposed to and it hurt the main event because the main event was going to go a lot longer. I definitely noticed that. This match went way on way too long. It was a decent match. It wasn't that good. I mean, why did it need to go long? That was not pro- professional by those guys who so keep going. I don't know if that's Okada. I don't know if it's Skrull. Man, I don't know why this went so long. They could have gone home like, uh, they should have gone home 12 minutes before. The match would have been better. It didn't need to be this long. Maybe it's because Okada's in the co-main of FLCS as I'll have a long match. I don't know. It just didn't need to be this long. So, uh, like, the end of the match, like, the last seven, probably the last, like, the, mat, the amount it was supposed to win over was actually became really, really, really good. One funny spot was in, uh, Skrull has an umbrella because Okada's finisher is the Rainmaker, and as Okada's about to hit it, he pulls the umbrella in the face. Uh, they had a few teases like Marty Skrull's gonna win. I didn't think he would. I, just, I couldn't see him, Okada losing to this guy, but Okada wins in the end. Uh, match got really good at the end. The crowd was going, this is awesome. I got up on my feet even though I thought it was going too long. Um, Okada gets the victory, another, uh, fun match now it's the main event i think the main event's gonna have its uh its time cut i think so main events next it's uh the young bucks and kota abushi against uh brandito uh rey mysterio and uh phoenix so it's six man tag main event i think uh they definitely had their uh, time cut so uh, in the main event uh they, they all came out to raise music uh penta uh sorry 
uh, not Pentagon, Phoenix and uh, Brandino, uh, they both uh, came on. Ray Hat was dressed up in the Wolverine gear, so uh, he always did that for WrestleMania as he'd do a special gear. He says Wolverine. So the main event, as expected, was completely action-packed and like a million dives, a whole bunch of crazy dives, a whole bunch of super kicks. Um, there were spinning dives, like twirling dives, like some really cool dives um, uh, in the match. And then near the end, you know, it gets really fun. Lots of, like, it was super fast-paced, uh, but they definitely got hurt from the co-main event. This probably, I wish this would have gone like a half hour and the main and the co-main event with Okada would have gone, uh, lost a lot of time. You know, would have like, you know, gone on 10 minutes, uh, finished 10 minutes or even just would have added 10 minutes. I think the overall show would have been even better, but this, this still match was still really good. A great main event, actually. A lot of fun young bucks win. And right when the young bucks win, they immediately like, you know, cut it off. So I'm sure like there's a whole bunch of technical difficulties at the end. Uh, so Young Bucks get the victory with, uh, Kota Ibushi, Doe Street, Golden Elite. So we sh- that's how the show ends. Um, I thought they should have ended the show with, like the entire Bullet Club, the Cody, the Young Bucks, Marty Skrull, uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page all like doing the, you know, the two sweet signs end the show. But, uh, it ended up <laughs> really quick. It's their first show. Um, great wrestling show, I have to say. Great show. Definitely, um, you know, if just for the rank, this isn't better than New Japan. New Japan has had some amazing shows. I don't say it. it's not better than the Wrestle Kingdoms, but it's definitely one of the best wrestling shows of the year. Um, it's, I don't know if I'd say it's the best, better than anything that we've put on. It's not as good as the NXT, some of the NXTs. I think one of the takeovers this year might have been better, but this was an amazing, still a great show. And this blew anything WWE put out on the main roster. The main roster WWE, this show absolutely blew it out of the fucking water anything this year. So, uh, Definitely a great pay-per-view, a great show. I hope they do more of these. We'll see what's next for uh, the Bullet Club. You know, Cody, uh, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Marty Scroll, Hangman Page. We'll see what's next with them, uh, what they do next. But uh, definitely have to hand it to Cody and uh, the Bucks for uh, putting on this show. So you have to thank them. Uh, great show. Definitely worth watching. And uh, every wrestling fan should really support this. So uh, All In was great. And... Uh, I hope to see more of these. I don't know what's next for them, but uh, this was definitely a great show.